This video continues a series of videos I've done looking at the connections within a ceiling rose and pendant and within a light switch. And in my last video in this series, we looked at future-proofing the switch. And to future-proof it, we added a three core from our ceiling rose and pendant down to here, rather than our traditional twin and CPC cable. That meant that we had a neutral at the switch. And again, this is a odd looking switch if this is the first time you've come into this video. So I recommend you check out the video that I've already made and I'll leave that in the eye above my head. So this switch now is a standard switch, but has a neutral connection in it. So meaning that we've future-proofed it from the point of view that if the customer wants to add a smart switch and that smart switch requires a neutral, we've actually got a neutral at the switch, even though at the ceiling rose and pendant, we've used the three plate method of wiring. However, it's often in new installations now, they take the feed directly to the switch, something that I call the two plate method. And by doing it in that method, it means automatically you will have a neutral at the switch. I'm gonna change all my connections in the ceiling rose and pendant and the light switch to show you that two plate method. But I'm gonna show you that you can also future proof that system by adding a slightly different cable into it in this video. So we've changed it over to a completely different wiring system. This is the two plate method. And again, if you're unfamiliar with this, I've got a lot of videos in a playlist called taking the feed to the switch and I recommend you work your way through them. But let's just have a quick overview of what's happening. So now at the switch, I've got two one millimeter squared twin and CPC cables coming in. One of the cables brings in a brown permanent line connection, the neutral and the CPC. And that's bringing the feed or supply into the switch. And then we've got a cable going out. So out of L1, we've got a switching line. Out of the connector block, we've got a neutral and a CPC that goes off to the lighting point. So we look at the connections in the lighting point here. We've got our CPC connected as we've always done inside of the earth terminal within here. Now, slight difference now because we don't have to put any sleeving on. The brown conductor coming in is actually a switching line and can go here in the connector block of two. And then we've got our neutral represented by an N here for our neutral. And as always, I've disconnected the outgoing terminals, which would be, if we look here, the flex that goes down to say the pendant. So we can see the block of two, we like to leave the outside ones ready for the switching line down to the, to the lamp and the neutral. So that's uh, the connections in those. So just pull back. This is great when you undo it. So you undo one of these in the ceiling, you think to yourself, oh, lovely, I've got to change the light fitting, maybe for a fancy light fitting, and you've only got the three connections, switching line, neutral, and the circuit protective conductor. However, what if you unscrewed this ceiling rose because you wanted to say, put a light into a roof space or go from here to a light in an extension? All of a sudden you haven't got what you really need and that's the permanent line connection. So you've got a switching line, but you haven't got that permanent line to go to the next um, area, whether it be the roof space or an extension. So surely there's a way of future-proofing the ceiling rows. So we've future-proofed the switch because we've got a neutral. So if this switch was changed in the future to a smart switch, we have a neutral. So that's brilliant. But when we come back to look at the ceiling rows and pendant, we can't actually take a supply to another room. We could take a feed to another light that comes on at the same time. And we've looked at that in videos as well. If we come off here with our switching line neutral and CPC to another light in the same area, they would come on together. But we certainly couldn't take a feed to another room and obviously install a new part of a lighting circuit. So how can we overcome it? It's simple. Hopefully you've realized from our previous video what you could do. This cable here that goes between the light and the switch is obviously under floors, chased into walls, etc. So it's quite an effort to pull that one cable in. But wouldn't it be more beneficial if that cable was a three core in CPC from the switch to the lighting point. So if we bring a three core in, we would have that spare core that would become our permanent line connection. Then when we got to this lighting point and wanted to extend the circuit, we would have the permanent line neutral and a CPC that would require us to carry the system onto another area. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out the twin and CPC cable here from this ceiling rose and pendant. And I'm gonna replace it with a three core. And then we'll look at the connections both in the ceiling rose and pendant and into the light switch itself to see how we're gonna connect that three core and CPC to make sure we future-proof this time the lighting point by having a permanent line at it so we can extend the circuit. 
So during the first fix stage, rather than pulling in a twin and CPC cable from the light switch to the lighting point, so chasing walls, lifting floorboards, as we said before, all that effort, let's not do that. Let's just pull in a three core and CPC cable, same effort, same walls to chase, same floorboards to lift, but it will give us the option of having that additional conductor at this lighting point. Previously, we were missing the permanent line connection. We only had the switching line, neutral and CPC. So if we look at the connections now that we've got to make, we've got to decide which cable is going to be for which of those line, switching line and neutral. So let's have a, have a think about it from previous videos. Let's start with the neutral. We said in previous videos, the temptation probably is to go for the black because black pre-2004 was the color of neutral, but we're trying to deneutralize black. So the industry said, we're not going to use that as best practice. We're gonna use one of the other colors. Well, I'd like to think that we're uh, not gonna be using the brown one as our neutral, and it obviously leaves the gray conductor left over. So we're gonna use our gray as our neutral connection. We're gonna use the black as our switching line connection and we need to identify it appropriately as we will the gray, which will become our neutral. And then we've got our permanent line connection that we didn't have before that we can insert into our loop. Therefore, when anyone unscrews this and wants to extend the circuit on, they will have that connection. So let's start off by dressing and putting in our gray conductor as our neutral. Need to identify it as a neutral, so we bring in our blue sleeve in. I've just got to work out the length of that approximately in order that we can make our connection. I'm not going to double it over into here. I know that's odd and anyone's seen any of the other videos that I've done. I said it's very rare that I double over into a ceiling rose and pendant now. There's three to choose from. We said we like to leave the outside ones for the flex, so it doesn't matter which of the two that are classed as our neutral, the little neutral, the N is there for our neutral symbol. So we've got three to choose from. I'm just gonna pop it into there. Just gonna dress it round, and we're gonna have our neutral connection in like there. So I've gotta try and keep out the way of the camera as we do this one up. So I'll tighten that one up and dress it to suit. So our gray one becomes our neutral. We said that our black one's gonna be our switching line connection. So we're gonna do that as our switching line and that as our permanent line. So I'll put my permanent line in next. I've got three to choose from. So it doesn't matter where I go out of those three. Trim that back and then just strip off the outer PVC. And if you've watched some of these videos previously, you'll notice I'm not using my knife now, partly because I'm no longer at the college and I can use some better tools that we never had at college. So we're gonna insert that one into the block of three in the loop, and it doesn't matter which one of those three that I go into in order to make my connection. I find it a little bit difficult to undo my screw with the camera in the way. Just pop that one in there, and I'll tighten that one down for my loop. So that's now the conductor that I didn't have previously. So connect that one in. So that's my loop connection. I've got a neutral. And now I've got my switching line, which is my black, which is gonna come down to this side, but I need to identify it as a switching line conductor. So I need to put on my brown sleeve in. And that becomes that one. I just need to strip it back. I need to try and make that connection as well. I'm gonna pop it in, got two to choose from. We always leave that outside one free. Into there for my connection. And hopefully I can tighten that one up. Okay, so we've got our connections in. So we've got our switching line of our three core is our black. Our permanent line is our brown and goes in loop. And our gray, identified with blue sleeving, is our neutral. It's just our CPC now to connect. Remember, this doesn't require a CPC because it's fully insulated. However, in the future, somebody could come along and change this for a metallic light fitting that requires a CPC. And therefore the CPC will be used then because we know the metallic light fitting would be an exposed conductive part. So pop that round there and I'm just gonna dress that into position. Maybe that's a little bit long, I'll just trim a little bit off. And it doesn't matter which one of the two I go into in order to secure my CPC. So hopefully you can see now that that, just by just putting a three core in and not doing the standard twin arrangement, so we've got our three core and CPC in position. We have gained our permanent connection to line in our loop. So if we come into the ceiling rose, we undo it and we want a loft light. We can just pick up our line neutral and CPC and go off and wire either the two plate or three plate method in that area. They extend the building. This is a light fitting, say in a dining area and they put another extension onto the building and they want that building to take the lighting circuit through. 
you can come straight from the lighting point, line, neutral and CPC, meaning you don't need to get to the switch. So at our switch here in our previous part of the video, the neutral and permanent line were there. That might mean you've got to chase down a wall to get to that point rather than the easier point, which was the light fit. Let's make our connections in here. So we've now got this three core to replace our twin and CPC. So we've got to make our connections. Well, let's start off with the CPC. They just go together in the back of the box again, fully insulated, so no exposed conductive parts. So we can pop our CPCs into the earth terminal back there. So they're tightened into place. So they're my CPCs in there. So I've got my three core cable. We know from the other end now what we've worked out everything's gonna be. We said that our gray conductor is gonna be identified as our neutral. So we bring our blue sleeve in, in and we're gonna put those together in our Wago 221 connector. So pop those into there to make our connections. So that's our neutral connections. And then we've got our black one, which is our switching line connection. So we put our brown sleeve in on there and that goes the other side of the switch into L1. And we'll connect that one up. But we've got a cable now we've got to find a home for. So this is the additional one. This is the one we never had last time. This is the extra conductor in the three core. We put this one in the other end into our loop terminal because it's our permanent line connection. Sometimes on site they're calling it a permanent live. So that's the permanent line connection. So where is that? We know the connector block here for the Wago 221 is our neutrals. We know our CPCs are here. We know our black is our switching line. So that means our permanent line connection is here in common and the two browns will need to go together in there. So I need to bring this new conductor that wasn't in the system before. The extra core becomes our permanent line and it will join this one into the common. So once I've got those connections in place, we will have taken that extra feed up to the light point that didn't have it previously. So they go together in there, tighten them up. And that's our three core introduced rather than a twin and CPC, meaning that we've got the three core that will carry our permanent line connection, the three core that will carry our neutral connection and our CPC, as well as our switching line connections up to the lighting point. Still can have a smart switch here because I've still got my neutral at this point. So in the future, this can be changed for a smart switch. So all my connections there, we're very comfortable with. We've used a three core and CPC rather than a twin and CPC, but not to aid us here because we already had our neutral down here. The three core was a massive benefit when we come up to our ceiling rows and pendant because it's still only one cable, the effort's the same to get it to here, but now if we want to extend our lighting circuit from this point, we actually have our permanent line connection, our neutral and CPC, which means we can take the feed into another area. Hopefully this video has been some help to you, and it'd be really interesting to see as part of your training process or a part of your apprenticeship or an electrician working on site that you've started maybe considering putting a three core down to a switch. It works both videos. This one and the previous one where I needed a neutral at the switch, this time I needed a permanent line at the ceiling row. Just having a three core between them rather than a twin and CPC is a, a, it's a lot handier and it obviously makes it a lot easier in the future. So if you can leave those comments below and your thoughts, that would be great. But as always, just hope this video has been some help.